I'm Megan Sorrentino. I'm head instructor at Classical Horsemanship. Today we're going to be doing a video on work in hand featuring international clinician Craig Stevens. For our horse today we're going to be using Cookie who's owned by Jamie Gross who got her out of the kill pen. Um, there's one of the features of the way that we work. You'll see we have a, like a rope. This is like a rope cabison that's um, fitting under the bridle and what you can see from it this is a lunge line that I have in my hand and you can see how I've run the rope through this now these are not these are only available from us um, but you can use a, re a regular lunging cabison so the thing to keep in mind here you'll notice that it's not a metal thing it's rope and that means that if I wiggle it, I, I, I do things with it, it won't bruise or damage the horse. All right. Um, we keep, usually when you lead, the attachment is on the underside, down in here, and that's where your lead line would be. And the problem with that is the horse, it metaphorically, is always ahead. All right. Whereas here, the idea is that the horse steps up and into the connection here. Everything starts with a single aid and so when we're doing lunging the single aid the primary aid all right and when i say primary aid the primary aid is an aid that's controlling is here now once i have the horse going this way and for other reasons where it's useful for us to use the lunging okay um once i have that going uh there's a point where i don't necessarily need this but I'll start doing work in hand. And the difference is, because this is work in hand also, but the difference is instead of using the lunge line, we start to use the reins. As we do it, you'll notice that, well, uh, first I'm gonna do this kind of wrong. What people do with the lunge line very typically is they'll do this and then they'll adjust the line. And the problem with that is the horse is out of control. All right, now the horse is good and he's standing there, nobody cares, all right? But the way it should be done is you drop it that way, and then you shorten it this way. That way you're always in control of the horse. And that's also true of the reins. So at all times you want to have some form of connection. So the actions um, of the aids are very simple. Lateral actions are to and from. So laterally would be this way, and then this way. That's to and from. And then we have up and then we have down. I could say we have forward as well. All right, but uh, the first thing is, is when we look at, when we switch and we switch out of here, we're here, we have one central point of control. So from the horse's point of view, the horse has to get everything from that one point. So once I've gotten you know, a green horse generally, because we'll start with lunging, and there won't even be a bridle. And then we'll put the bridle on much in the way I have it right now. So then if I'm gonna go and do work in hand, I'll still have the lunge line in the, my hand because that gives me the opportunity of letting go. And then this, meaning this side of the bit would be the primary rein. Now this bit that we have in the horse's mouth is called a boucher snaffle. It's like a regular snaffle in there, and I'm not going to open the mouth for you to look at it. But the poche snaffle, the joint in a regular snaffle, will rise with the horse's tongue when it's in the mouth. With a boche snaffle, because of the way it's held, the joint doesn't collapse. So it doesn't force the horse to raise the head. Because in a regular snaffle, when the point goes up, it goes into the roof of the horse's mouth and that causes the horse's head to raise. When I come and I have the bushy snaffle, I don't have to worry about that. So if you look at the way the bit is in the horse's mouth, you can see it's in the corners of the mouth. When I act, I, I want to avoid ever creasing that. So my actions, when I say that, I mean the lips. Right, so my actions are forward, notice the line, I'm going in the direction of the mouth. Okay, it's backward, okay, and notice that it will then follow, it can then follow the line of the head this way, so I might come up, 
and when I come up, it follows the line of the shoulder. When the horse is walking, I can draw it forward, pulling this way, and when the horse draws its leg forward, I can then bring this back, and then it'll follow this line of attack. So down and forward and up. So all the actions are the bit and the lunge line always have a small circle in them. And I don't know quite how to show it. I certainly can exaggerate a circle, all right? But there's always a small rotation because the movement is always somewhat circular. So when I want to connect with a horse, the first thing that I need is touch. So on the lunge line, that's touch. This is non-touch. When I have touch, you'll notice that I'm not pulling the head. All I'm doing is taking a very gentle touch. Um, maybe you can think of it as like sunburn. In other words, you don't want to come back and really touch it, but you can be very gentle. So the line of control, and you can see me do it with the lunge line, is this way, forward. One of the advantages of having the rope is you can get kind of physical here, not so much here. So when I, I look at the bit and I look at the line, you can see how this is like loop. Now, if you have snaps, that's not the best. Okay, it's much better with this kind or even if it has a buckle. But this, you see how I'm going from the base of it to the top. And if I do that this way, that's vibration. Okay, touch, you can see the downward touch, meaning that there's the weight of the line. When the horse is proper, uh, meaning holding itself in a work position, this will come to 90 degrees. So that's done by a combination of bending and raising. And I know I'm giving you a lot of information right now. We don't need to, you don't need to have every little one, but the important thing here is that there's never pulling backwards and it's not pressure that controls the horse. What controls the horse is position. So um, if we look here, we can see this is the jawbone of the horse. Laying right under that is the parotid gland. So if I bend the horse into me, you can see that this, the jawbone goes into the gland. And so when I do that, and then I come very slightly up, you see the horse raises its head. So what you're trying to do, you're not trying to put the horse in an artificial position. You're trying to get the horse to be uh, natural, relaxed. So there's no pulling. Uh, when you deal with a fully trained horse, it'll look just like dressage. When you're dealing with a green horse, God knows what it'll look like. It depends on the horse, but there's no forcing. So when I come here and I want to, to relax the horse, I can use vibration. And the effect, if I raise the head a little, the effect of doing this is to lower the head. And if I come straight down, we'll see how good this horse is at it. Using a small lateral action, drawing the head down. Right. There we go. So you can see the nose will start to come in. And if I want to lower the head, I can bend the head by drawing very slightly. Again, notice that I'm not pushing. And notice that I'm never really pulling. I'm just coming into very gentle touch. And you can see I'm drawing the head. This would be vibration and drawing the head. If I feel any resistance tightening in the neck, I use vibrations. Coming up, notice how the rein aligns with the bit. Notice how there's no pressure. I'm kind of sanding the bit, kind of, except it's a very, very, very light touch. So when I come like that and I create a feeling of lift, and you'll notice this is increasing, so there's no backward pressure, there's the feeling of lift. 
it's not working. Ah, vibration, and then the head comes up. So my actions are all within the confines uh, from about here, when you're riding it might be a little bit more up, to down here. And in hand, it may even pull slightly forward this way. But everything is very light that way. So as I do this, one of the things I feel sometimes is I feel that the neck is locked, that the horse isn't relaxed. So I ask the horse, like I'm asking the horse to raise the head right now. You'll notice how weak I am. Well, that's not working. But what I feel here is a little bit of weight. So there's a small resistance. So I could solve it this way. See how I'm vibrating and I'm using the weight of the line? I can be silly about it and do it this way. All right, we don't need to be that crude. But it shows you the basic idea. So when it comes this way and the horse won't come up, I can then use the whip to get the horse to relax. And you'll see I'm gonna use the whip in two ways. Gentle stroking and very gentle tapping. When we think about the whip, what we think about is correcting the horse and punishing the horse. That's actually a pretty new idea that only occurred in the 19th century. 18th century and earlier, the whip um, was not used to punish, but to direct. So that the way that the whip can be used is to vibrate, to get the muscles to relax. It can also be done, you'll see I'm doing it like a fiddle, and I can kind of push and use that and take my whip right, and get the horse to generally relax. And you'll notice that when I carry the whip or I use the whip, I'm using it this way. Most people will be inclined to do it this way because this is what they do when they ride. Not that that's a good idea, but that's their habit. All right, so if I were to work this way, you can see it's somewhat awkward. But if I do it this way, I can go a whole 360 degrees. Whereas if I do it this way, I'm kind of stuck. You know, and it's not that, you, that it's wrong. It's just that this is more useful. Uh, however, if you're just beginning, it may be so uncomfortable that it's not terribly useful. Good, practice. Okay, so I want to come up and now I'm going to use the, the, the rein pathetically. I know it's not going to work because I'm not applying any force. All right, there it is. Now, ah. So you see I used the pathetic rein. Uh, I then tapped uh, to, to eliminate the resistance. And the whip is held, again, generally this way. So when I do work in hand, the most basic position is like this. Please notice, you never, I, for the sake of this video, I'm gonna let go of the bit. Normally you would never let go of the bit. You'd always let go there. But here, you can see I'm about mid-shoulder. You can also see the way I'm holding this. You'll see that gives me the full range. All right, when I use the whip, I want the rear to move. I don't have to hit, I can just push. Now, you'll see, yeah, it worked pretty good. It may not have, in which case I could have given a very gentle tap. The weaker you are with your taps, the more effective you're going to be. So a lot of times when we do work in hand, especially in the beginning, we'll start first with the lunge, and then we'll go to the single line and the whip will be held always like this. You don't necessarily have to have the other rein. You get more precision and there will be a time when you want to do it. But in the basic work, what you want the horse to do is to pay attention to what aid. So the actions are coming up and I'm going to come towards the horse's body and you'll see the horse isn't moving. So I'm gonna now use the whip to produce the movement. See, I push a little with the whip. All right. And you can see, even in this, you can see the horse stand up a little bit. 